Hey Game Rubies, thank you for tuning in this week. We're going to do a bit of a different format for this video. Um, I know I kind of dropped the Paper Mario review out of nowhere after about a year of practically radio silence on the YouTube front. Uh, but I actually have been making content. And so I wanted to kind of give a bit of a recap about what I've been up to and why my upload schedule has been so inconsistent. Um, and provide you guys an insight into a project that I've been taking part in for a couple of years at this point. Um, so I know I post about this on my blog and on my Twitter, but for people who only watch the videos, um, I was... Uh, in grad school and working full time, uh, a couple of jobs actually, and so uh, my scheduling got kind of out of whack. But I was fortunate enough at the start of this year to have finished my master's degree, and that opened me up to a lot more time. Of course, you know, with the the state of the world and uh, job obligations and a job transition, I found myself um, kind of at a bit of a roadblock as far as making content for this channel. But I'm I'm happy to say that I'm. A uh, few scripts deep. I actually have a couple of projects coming out over the next couple of weeks that I've been working on for some time. Um, so, you know, something's in the final stage of their development, and I'm very excited to share them. Um, but to kind of give you a bit of a recap as to one of the biggest things that I've been involved in over the last couple of years... Um, I was fortunate enough to meet Andrew Pappas from RenGen Marketing at PAX, um, and he actually has a podcast called Indie Game Movement, which is essentially about the marketing and distribution of independent video games, as well as some other topics such as community management. Um, we talked about uh, different approaches to various social issues in games, marketing games of a specific type, um, building business relationships, all sorts of things. And just to clarify, while I am a co-host and producer of this podcast, it's not just Andrew and I talking to each other either. I mean, I do believe we both have valuable insights to contribute, but we also bring a lot of guests from various indie dev teams. Uh, we've had guests from The Game Bakers, uh, who you guys might know as the developers of Fury and most recently Haven. Uh, we had Victoria Tran and Tanya Short from uh, Kit Fox. Um, Victoria has since moved on to Inner Sloth, who, who's made... Uh, among us as their community uh, manager and communications director. Um, so a lot of people um, in the industry who, you know, we're fond of, we consider friends of ours now, and it's been uh, just an absolutely incredible experience getting to kind of engage and involve with people in the industry at this level. Um, perhaps, in my opinion, our biggest achievement was that this year at PAX East 2020, we were able to do a panel uh, with a couple of guests where we discussed uh, networking, marketing yourself in, in a video game uh, development space or a convention of sorts. Um, so I'll be providing linked information in the description um, for the podcast so you can all give it a listen. But I thought to kind of uh, celebrate you know, the year coming to a close and all of the hard work uh, that Andrew and I have done that I would compile some clips of us co-hosting various episodes together, including some with the guests that I mentioned. Now, these are going to be short clips, probably two to three minutes long a piece. However, each of these episodes is anywhere from 35 minutes to an hour. So if you hear something that really stands out to you, please go in the description. I'll have all of the episodes labeled on this video, so that way you'll be able to target the ones that are, are most interesting to you. And we have an exciting New Year's special that we actually just recorded like two hours ago. I think it's one of the best episodes we've done, and that'll be coming out on the 22nd. So um, please, uh, I'm about to stop talking now so I can leave room for you guys to listen to the audio. But it's been an absolute blast, and I hope that uh, you'll find it worthy of your time and, and worth checking out. Um, I'll meet you guys at the end for a quick outro when you kind of started it up like what did the team look like and then when did you kind of decide or how did you decide you know what other collaborators you wanted to bring in on the project so we usually start with uh, Emric Tola who is the co-founder of the studio with me and the creative director on Fury we, we usually start by pitching each other uh, the idea and testing it and saying okay what do we really want to see in that game and what's important and then uh, with Furry, it was uh, very easy because we had a very clear vision of the game. So we were like, okay, we want those unforgettable boss fights. So we need the best character designer in the world. 
So we met actually a short list of them, and we contacted them. And then we contacted Takashi Okazaki for that, and he said yes. So and it was the same for music. We were like, okay, the music, we both, he did more boxing than me, but we both did uh, sports or competitive sports or even, um, how do you say that, when you do matches against people, anyway, competitive sports, I guess. So we both did that, and we both listened to music before going to those competitive sports, and we both listened to the this kind of electro music that gave, gave us really so much energy before going into fights. And so we decided, okay, this is going to be an electro soundtrack, that's for sure. And this is how we decided. The same, we went through Spotify. <laughs> we said, oh, those guys are awesome. We got to get them. We got to get them. We had a list. And then we contacted them in the same way. Um, and it was the same basically for everything. Um, the music, uh, the art style. And then also for uh, the rest of the team, we already had a, like a core team at Game Bakers. We already game that were um, kind of action oriented our last game was actually a beat them up on mobile before that mm -hmm. so we already had a great animator um, and we, we we were in need of a great a technical artist and also we looked around us and we found one and we contacted him and we pitched him and, and then he said yes so uh, yeah we were lucky that everybody we wanted said yes <laughs> <laughs> right yeah so it sounds like it was a, a very well researched process pretty early on um, so it kind of looking into like what you wanted what was going to capture the feeling uh, mm -hmm. that kind of came to mind when you gave your pitch and then kind of starting to curate you know mm -hmm. the, the necessary talents um, the thing I would add is be it's, we, we had to have the beginning, so first we pitched Takashi Okazaki because it's, we knew it was all going to relate around the bosses and the hero design, and with, we knew that with his design we were going to be able to convince anyone. And then we pitched one of the musicians, it was Carpenter Brut, uh, which I really loved the energy of his sounds, and, and then he, he made the first uh, music for our first trailer, which was actually a, a fake gameplay footage in Unity, but uh, mostly animated with Maya, not really running with uh, you know all the the programmation, the mm -hmm. programming going on, just mostly fake animations in, in, and rendering in Unity and his music, and. And this is based on that, that then we pitched everyone else. And this is how, also how we signed our agreement with Sony, based on that video. And the funny thing, and I'm super proud of that, um, and this is really the work of Emric Toa, the creative director, is that sometimes when you look at the video, even three years later, it still looks so much like the game. There was like, we didn't change our mind on that game. Um, yeah, so actually, uh, I've had a nicely a lot of positive networking experiences but I think the most positive ones um, I've always felt pressure to go to like big parties and network and be like oh, I have to make all the connections and do whatever but the best times I've had positive networking experiences have been when people have been like hey let's just grab a coffee with like some like a small group of people and then you can more intimately get to know them um, I found all of those to be much better than any party I've ever been to um, like dinners or just like anything like that and just having um, when they're asking me for like mentorship or advice, like doing something simple like paying for my coffee, like they don't have to and I've, I'll try to pay for my own coffee, but it's knowing that the time that you take away from someone is very valuable to them um, and acknowledging that, like that gives me a positive experience with them. Yeah, I, I mean, I could, uh, the, the example that comes to mind for me, uh, Andrew and I met on a bus like two years ago. <laughs> you know, it, it, so it doesn't always immediately come over as a networking experience. You know, we were just striking up conversation. Um, he wore an awesome Luigi uh, cosplay, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, I am the best Luigi. That's not negotiable. <laughs> but, um, you know, just to, to kind of revisit, you know, we said marketing yourself as kind of one of the core tenets of what we're discussing here. I think a lot of the time a reservation that people have is that they don't feel like they have enough experience behind them or they feel like they have to earn the conversation, which I don't think is necessarily true. I think the reason we started collaborating together, you know, like of course I'd had credits and things that I'd worked with, you know, prior to, but most of our conversation was really around just perspectives on games, you know, and 
how we felt things were in the industry and, and kind of what our expectations were going into packs, people we wanted to meet, things we wanted to talk about. You know, and I think in having that conversation, we allowed our values to shine through a little bit more than, say, our experience. And if you're just starting out, that's honestly a really great way to go because there is an absolute like reservoir of talent in this field. What a lot of people are looking for are people who are very personable and, and relatable, who you know, have values that at least in some capacity kind of bounce off of their own. Basically providing that good work-life balance between these three entities. And I was so passionate about all three of them that I felt like any time I devoted more time, a little bit more time to one of those, it was pulling me away or tearing me away is probably the best way I could describe it from something else. It was really painful. And, and ultimately, it wasn't healthy. Um, so, and, and that's where I'm kind of like going on this tangent a little bit is to be accepting of what you're allocating for those things. So as you said, Mustafa, when you're looking into the scope and, and really thinking about what you're applying at reallocating those resources, and in this case specifically, as it probably relates to a lot of you, um, coming down to time, you know, planning it out. And, and kind of like setting those expectations like, hey, I'm going to do this. If you go over a little bit here and there, that's okay. It's more of a, a process than anything else and then to monitor to that and move on. Um, but you, you really want to do that because if, if you don't and, and, and if you don't give yourself that much flexibility, you can run into other issues too. So, again, the, the, the level of scope you said and also um, applying what those allocations are and, and being flexible with it I think is probably the best way you can go about it a, a, as you described. Yeah, and I, I would definitely, uh, you know, I appreciate that, and I would, I would definitely double down and even say, as as you're, um, you know, considering those allocations, especially uh, for for game developers, you know, uh, knowing your project is also a really big part of this. Mm. Uh, like, like it's hard in the early stages to know exactly what a project's always going to ask of you, um, but there are some things you really want to get a start on early. Um, for instance, if you know that you're going to have to outsource anything, assets or, or otherwise, yep. uh, starting to kind of curate the people you have in mind, you know, um, like all of those things kind of prevent you from reaching a point where, okay, now you're at a point where you can't really move forward in development without having access to these things, and you have to scramble to kind of pull something together, Um yeah, so starting to have those conversations early, too, is a great way of having a sense of, of all the resources that are at your disposal as well. So, And there you guys have it. So uh, those were just a few episodes that we've done. The show's been going on. We're on a bi-weekly cadence and have been for most of this year. So uh, there's, there's plenty to listen to. So many different topics, so many different developers and people that we got to speak to. Um, and it was an absolute privilege connecting with each and every one of them and discussing these topics that are so uh, so personal to us and so relevant to this industry that we all have such a deep love for. Um, but I want to thank you all again for tuning in this time. I know it was a little bit different. Uh, I'm hoping that by next week I'll have something for you that's a little bit more of a return to form. We'll see. Um, I, ha I have something in the works that I'm very excited for. It's been a long time coming. Um, if it's not up by end of next week, um, it, it'd be up prior to the end of this calendar year, and it's going to be a bit of a bit of a behemoth. Uh, it's something that I'm I'm so so proud of how it's turning out. Um, but I want to thank you all so much again for tuning in. Um, I appreciate your your time. Please feel free to go into the description. Uh, check out the podcast if you want to listen to it further. I, I think anybody who's interested in games in any capacity has a lot that they can learn from this, especially anyone who wants to go into game development. Uh, but thank you again, uh, and come back soon for more from The Game Room. <laughs>